All right, all you podium placing high scoring champions out there, welcome back to the Yindy Radio Arcade. And one thing we forgot to ask for for that game in the near future, maybe a multiplayer mode, especially during those Dukes of Hazard levels, so you can actually be Enos and try to chase down them Dukes, them Dukes, them Dukes. <laughs> I don't know why I always have to say that when I mention the Duke boys, especially in video game like form. But besides trying to catch them Duke boys down a country desert road, I think it's time for us to check out some high scores on high display while putting your indie games there along the way for another edition of the Indie Wall of Fame. And the first game that we have up comes from the developers, Reality Reflection. Nice game developer name, by the way, with their said game, Gangsta Underground, The Poker. You know what? Wait a minute, where's that movie guy? Hey, movie guy, come over here. This sounds like a perfect movie title. Read it, read it. Gangsta Underground, The Poker. Coming soon to a theater near you. Yeah, thanks, thanks, man. Anyway, folks, this game automatically reminds me of a combination of Suicide Kings with a little hint of something that you would see probably during the movie Training Day. Now, granted, it doesn't involve you getting shot at the end of it all, but either way, folks, here's hoping in the near future for this game that they give you an option to purchase a bulletproof vest or a better weapon to try to take out your opponent if you happen to win too much. Because one of the conditions of this game is if you win too much, there's a high possibility you could get shot. So here's hoping you can do anything to avoid that. Yeah, enough said. And besides getting shot while playing a game of poker like if it was Red Dead Redemption at high noon, the next game that we have up comes from the developers, Uber Bax Gaming, with their said game, Suppressor. And this game automatically reminds me of a combination of Monster Hunter with a little hint of Pokemon in there as well, seeing the fact that you have to hunt down these monsters. And oh, Maestro brought up the point too. Also reminds me of Monster Rancher in there because of that floating eyeball that you had to capture as well, with the exception that none of these monsters are on disc. Unless if you actually put this game on a disc. But besides trying to split hairs, folks, here is hoping in the near future, besides getting a chance to own your own pet dragon, you also get a chance to actually train the said dragon to take out these other creatures. And apparently, according to Maestro, you can. Well, here is hope you can also turn it into a different element of dragon while you're flying around. And the maestro just said, maybe just call a scientist for that to happen. Alright, well, here's hoping there's a scientist in this game that can make it happen. And besides gene splicing dragons that have different elements, folks, the next game that we have up comes from the developers Moon Ray Studios, nice developer name by the way, with their said game, Title Shock. And this game automatically reminds me of Treasures of the Deep with a little hint of not only Fortnite, but a splash in there of Battlefield Heroes in there as well. And the reason why we say that, folks, is because you're fighting your opponents underwater, which is really cool. And here's hoping in the near future for this game, besides getting a chance to fight them underwater while you're swimming, you also get an option for different vehicles like a submarine, or even one of those little small vehicles that you get a chance to ride on the back of. I keep forgetting the name of it, but it's sort of like the same vehicle from Treasures from the Deep. Or even that car from James Bond that can actually ride underneath the water. Here's hoping for both of those in this game, besides landmines to take out your opponents. And according to the maestro, there's already landmines in the game. Oh, 
Oh, that's good. Well, here's hoping they add one with different elements to it. You know, just to mix it up. You know, besides the standard explosion, maybe just maybe ice or lightning to shock your opponents too. But then again, if it's underwater, it's going to probably affect you too. So here's hoping you're out of the blast radius of it. And besides different elemental forms of landmines that are underwater, folks, the next game that we have up comes from the developers to Story Games with their said game, Crash World. And this game automatically reminds me of a combination of not only Grand Theft Auto for the pizza missions, a little hit of The Simpsons hit and run, and even a splash in there of Crazy Taxi as well. Yeah, you know, if you had to actually destroy things along the way while you're trying to deliver things. Yeah, that is like Crazy Taxi. And here's hoping in the near future for this game, besides getting a chance to use a regular pizza delivery truck, they also give the option of using different vehicles to try to help you deliver pizzas on time, including a fire truck. Hey, before you say anything, Maestro, if you saw how crazy this game was with the trailer they had, I hope a fire truck is an option in this game that you can use to deliver pizza. You know, to get through the streets just a little bit faster than most. And the last but not least game that we have up for this week comes from the developers, Matt Works, with their said game, Dominant. Or Dominant? Oh, it's supposed to be a play on words, so Domin Ant. Because it's an ant. Right. And this game automatically reminds me of a combination of a bug's life with a little hint of the movie Ants in there as well. Even with a little hint of mouse hunt in there too because of the people that are trying to take out this small ant that's trying to look for a little bit of food. And here's hoping in the near future for this game besides getting a chance to actually play alongside with your friends and even upgrade this ant and according to the maestro you can actually upgrade it to have wings on it here's also hoping that you can actually cause this guy to slip up on different things so you can get some food and get out of there and according to the maestro you can nice and with all those cool games out of the way for this week, folks, we now head on over to the high scores from the Twitter page of High Score. And the first high score that we have up comes from Awesome Ogre with his high score of 2020. Nice year, by the way. With his high score from the video game Ivan Iron Man Stewart's Super Off-Road for the NES. Never heard of it. And the next high score that we have up comes from the gamer known as Oyama Family with his high score of 32,530, a part of the Atari 2600 game of Death Trap. Now, I did hear of this game and never beat it as well. Anyway, next high score that we have up once again comes from Oyama Family with his high score of 141,410, a part of the Atari classic game of Pac-Man Collection, Buckman under Orange 2 Plus Off and Fast On Difficulty. Next high score we have up after that comes from Zero Skull with his high score of 28,108, a part of the Game Boy Advance game of Atari Anniversary Advance, Tempest. Not bad. Then you have once again, Oyama Family on a roll with another high score of 98,130, a part of the Pac-Man collection game of Pac-Man under Melon 1 Plus Off, Fast Off Difficulty. And oh 
Wow! Maestro said the next high score is one close to my heart, which comes from Lark Quay, with his high score of 54,880, a part of the Game Boy Advance game of Famicom Mini Volume 16, Dig Dug. And he's right! That is close to my heart! I love me some Dig Dug! Anyway, next high score once again comes from Lark Quay with his high score of 12,805, a part of the Game Boy Advance game of Activision Anthology Plague Attack Game 3B. Or not 3B, that is the question. Alright, before we make any more horrible jokes, folks, the next high score that we have up comes from the gamer 8-Bit Deity with his high score of 73,500, a part of the MSX game of Mauser. Nice! Then, once again, 8-Bit Deity with his high score of 161,600, a part of the MSX game of Pippi. Or Pippi? You know what, we'll go with Pippi, so it doesn't sound like we're saying urine in any form on the microphone. Next high score that we have up after that comes from Omar Geddon with his high score of 911,500, a part of the SNES game of Super Street Fighter 2, The New Challengers, under Battle Difficulty 6 under Turbo 1. Next high score you have up after that comes from, once again, Omar Geddon with his high score of 779,200, a part of the SNES game of Street Fighter 2, The World Warrior. And I got a feeling that came from Kenshi. Or is his name Loki now? He changes his name a lot. And if you're wondering who I'm talking about, is a cool wrestler who's traveled the world with all of his cool kung fu-like moves in the ring. Which is really awesome. And the last but not least high score that we have up for this week, and Maestro said it's another game that's close to my heart, comes from the gamer known as Killingsworth with his high score of, wow, 5,537,475, a part of the classic Atari 7800 game of Robotron 2084 under novice difficulty. And if you guys want to check out any other cool high scores that are still making their way through the Twitterverse as we speak, you can head on over to the Twitter page of one man only known as at HighScore, or head on over to their website known as HighScore.com to win cool prizes for your high score. And like we say around here all the time when we talk about high scores on this show, it's a fair trade. And the high score that we have up to kick off this month of wonderment comes from none other than Killingsworth with his high score of 5,537,475, a part of the Atari 7800 game of Robotron 2084 under novice difficulty. And if you guys and gals out there want to check out any of these cool games that we talked about for this week, besides other games that are still coming through the steam machine via the cargo ship, cargo plane, or subterranean train that is currently rumbling underneath your toes, you can head on over to the store.steampower page, only known as store.steampower.com, and just click ever so lightly on that indie button as well as clicking on that upcoming page as well to check out a whole bunch of cool games that'll definitely make your vacation feel like a perfect 10. Just like all of these games. And according to the maestro if you act now, we'll even include a Hawaiian hat if you check them out. Yeah, cause we gave the guy who did the intro one when he showed up. We're giving these things out for free. With games. And I guess with that said, folks, we might as well head back into the music, and when we return, we'll be back with this week's edition of the $64,000 question, right after a word 
from our sponsors. So don't skip out on that bonus round just yet, folks, and stay tuned.